Hey friends, Elizabeth here from Plant-Based Bride and welcome to another video. Today I want to talk about how to start a bullet journal. This has been talked about ad nauseum on the internet, but if you've stumbled upon this video and you're looking for some advice, then I hope this video is helpful. First things first, what is a bullet journal? Basically, a bullet journal is an analog modular organizational system that you can adjust to fit your ever-changing needs. It's a one-place catch-all to track, organize, and plan your entire life. If you're the type of person who keeps organized by writing lists on random post-it notes or at the back of a receipt or in an app on your phone or just trying to remember it with all of your might, then a bullet journal might be the right next step for you. It's a way to collect all of those different things together in one consolidated place. I highly recommend checking out the Bullet Journal YouTube channel to find videos that go into the system in a really clear, efficient way. I'll link their video on how to start a bullet journal in the description box down below. I highly recommend you give it a watch if you're new to bullet journaling. I've also made a video on the ABCs of bullet journaling where I go through a bunch of the terminology that you may be unfamiliar with, so I'll link that down below as well if you find yourself getting confused by terms like spreads or migration or collections. That video goes through basically every term I could possibly think of that had to do with bullet journaling. The most important thing to remember when starting on your bullet journal journey is that a bullet journal is supposed to make your life simpler and calmer, not more complicated and stressful. If you find your bullet journal is making you feel stressed, if you find it's making your day-to-day -day life more complicated, then either you need to rethink how you're using your bullet journal, or maybe a bullet journal just isn't the right system for you. And that's fine. Not every system works for everyone, even a system as flexible as a bullet journal. Another very important thing to keep in mind if you're new to having a bullet journal is that it does not have to be perfect. And it doesn't have to look like anyone else's. I have made numerous videos on this subject, so I won't get too deep into it. I'll link them down below if you want to give them a watch. But really just remember that bullet journaling is a journey. There will be a progression. It will change over time. And you really shouldn't compare your first ever spread, your first ever bullet journal to someone who's been doing it for years and years. My first bullet journals looked nothing like my current day bullet journals. They have changed significantly, not only in the way I use them, the organizational systems, how they aid in my productivity, but also in the way they look artistically, their aesthetic. Those things change over time, both with my life changing, my career changing, me as a person changing, and also as my experience grows and my skills grow. Here's a really quick comparison between my first ever bullet journal and my current bullet journal. As you can see, they are worlds apart, but both of them worked in their own time. My first bullet journal looked a lot simpler, wasn't nearly as aesthetically pleasing, but it did the job and it kept me organized. And my current bullet journal, while it may be more artistically developed, is still at its core about keeping me organized and productive. And it is very effective at doing just that. Also, please remember that mistakes are totally normal and happen to everyone. I do my best to include mistakes in videos when I make them to just remind everybody that it happens and it's fine. You can just leave a mistake, nothing bad will happen, or you can try to fix it or cover it up, whatever works for you. But I hear too often people feeling like they can't start because they're going to make a mistake and beating themselves up over that. And that's just so unfair because if you never try, you'll never grow. It takes time and practice and experience. And even with all of those things, you will still make mistakes and it's okay. So now that the motivational pep talk portion of this video is over, I want to talk to you about the more practical things you need to keep in mind when you want to start a bullet journal. First thing is supplies. What do you actually need to start? All you need is a notebook of some kind and a writing utensil. That's it. You can get more supplies if you want, but you definitely don't need them. I also highly recommend that you start with just the basics, an affordable notebook and a pen or pencil you already have at home, 
and get used to the system before you worry about buying a bunch of supplies, washi tape and stickers and paint and fancy brush pens. Just start simple and make sure the system even works for you. Of course, if you already know you want your bullet journal to be artistic, if that's part of the core reason you want to start a bullet journal to express your creativity, then totally start with that artistic element. But if you're not sure if you want your bullet journal to be a creative outlet, then don't worry about that just yet. It doesn't have to be aesthetic and it doesn't have to look like anyone else's to be what works for you. So how do you actually set up a brand new bullet journal? First things first, let's get this out of the way. You don't have to start a new bullet journal at the start of the year or at the start of a month. You can start whenever you want. Setting up a brand new bullet journal does take a little bit more time, planning, and thought than just setting up a new spread in an already established bullet journal. I'd highly recommend starting with the absolute basics, an index so that you can track where spreads are and can always find them, a key so that you can learn what all of the bullets mean as you start to use this new system, and a future log for a longer term planning. There are also about a million other spreads you could add to a brand new bullet journal for longer term tracking or planning, like a goal spread or a brain dump or a reading tracker or a grid spacing spread, but those are all things you can add later and you don't have to worry about them right off the bat. If you do think you'll want to be adding some more of these collections and spreads to your new bullet journal setup, I'll be posting my new Bujo setup next week so you can get some ideas from that video. Or if you're impatient, which I admittedly am, you can go back and watch my last brand new bullet journal setup, which I did in anticipation of 2020. That will give you lots of spread ideas and some tips and tricks for setting up your brand new bullet journal. Once you have the basics down, you have your index key and future log and any other collections that are really important for you to include in your bullet journal, it's time to set up your first month. Now there are about a million ways to do this because a bullet journal is meant to shift and change and adjust based on your needs. But again, I would recommend starting with some simplicity. So for me, the absolutely essential monthly spreads that I need are some sort of monthly log or calendar and some sort of daily or weekly spread. For a monthly log, you have two basic options, though there are, again, about a million ways you could get creative with this, but typically I would split most monthly calendars or logs into either a vertical list format or a standard calendar format. I typically prefer the standard calendar format. It just works better for my visual brain, but a lot of people like a list format and it tends to be faster to set up. So choose whichever one you think will work best for you. And if you're not happy with it, you can always try something different next month. As for more short-term immediate planning, you'll either need to set up daily spreads or weekly spreads. I personally prefer a weekly spread and I also personally prefer the rolling weekly layout, which for me is the absolute best out of any weekly or daily I have ever tried for my own life. So if you're interested in all the details about how a rolling weekly works and why I like it, then check out the video I made completely dedicated to that purpose here. Of course, this layout won't work for everyone, so you don't need to use a rolling weekly if you don't think it'll work for you. But for those of you who are looking for a place to start and think you want to start with weeklies, I would highly recommend checking out that system. Of course, if you'd rather start with dailies, that is totally fine too. I used the standard bullet journal daily logs for years and they worked really, really well for me. Again, I would check out the bullet journal YouTube channel or the bullet journal website to learn in detail how to use these daily logs. There's a little bit of a learning curve to get the system down, but then after that, it is really, really simple to use. Of course, you can change how you're using your bullet journal whenever you want. You can use a daily for a couple days and then decide you'd rather have a weekly and set one up and use that. Then decide you want a different type of weekly and change it up for the next week and then go back to dailies. It is completely up to you. And especially when you're first starting your bullet journal, this is going to be a very fluid process and it will help if you just embrace that. Be willing to try things that don't work in the hopes of finding that perfect holy grail spread like the rolling weekly is for me. What about themes? You can choose one if you want, either for your entire bullet journal or month by month. 
and it could be as loose as having a color that weaves through your entire bullet journal like I did with having a gold accent through my entire bullet journal starting in January of 2020, or it could be as super specific as my August theme, which was Leo, and everything in my setup had to do with the astrological sign Leo. Again, there is no need to worry about a theme, especially when you're just getting started or if it's just not something that interests you. You don't need to have themes for your bullet journal to be valid. But if you want to get creative from the jump, then go for it, because part of what's great about a bullet journal is it can be whatever you want it to be. If you want to do themes, but you have no idea where to start, I do have a video where I list 100 theme ideas. So it's a great jumping off point if you're just getting started. I will link it in the description box and in the card here for you to check it out. If you want to get creative, but you're not particularly artistic, there are lots of options there as well. You can try recreating spreads that other people make, or you can try using stickers and washi tape to decorate your pages, or even sign up for someone's Patreon, like mine for example, and get printables each month to print out and use in your bullet journal. Once you're all set up, it's time to use it. Take note as you go along of the spreads that you seem to be flipping to every single day and the spreads that you're neglecting. When you're not using a spread, it either means it needs to be reworked or it's not something you actually need in your bullet journal. It's important to keep note of these things, especially earlier on in your bullet journaling journey, so you can figure out what is actually worth your time setting up and having in your bullet journal and what's just a waste of space. For example, I used to use habit trackers because they're very popular on the bullet journaling internet. And for a long time, I felt like they worked for me and I enjoyed them. And then after a while, I started to feel like I just wasn't using them. And at first I tried changing up the spread, different layouts, different placement, tracking different numbers of habits. I even started putting little habit trackers on my weeklies to see if that would work better. And it turns out that in the end, habit trackers just don't really work for me. And I ended up removing them from my bullet journal altogether. Now that's not to say I don't actually track habits in my bullet journal because I do, but I just include them in my weekly spread as an another task instead of worrying about tracking them on a separate spread specifically dedicated to habits. I'm glad I discovered that habit trackers don't work for me so I don't have to take the time to set them up and I don't have to feel bad when I don't use them. Now maybe for you habit trackers will work perfectly but another type of spread just won't be your jam. And that's totally fine and that's the process of developing your bullet journal specifically formulated for you and your life. You can follow creators online to keep your inspiration going moving forward from month to month to get new ideas for spreads or new theme ideas, or just to see how other people use their bullet journal. Just remember not to use it as an opportunity to compare yourself to other people and beat yourself up. For example, I've been bullet journaling since the end of 2014. So comparing your first one to my whatevereth one is really an unfair comparison and you should really be fair to yourself because when you're starting something brand new, it makes sense that it's gonna take you a little bit of time to find your footing. Six years ago, I had never painted with watercolors and I had no idea how to use them. Six years ago, I would not have been able to set up the kinds of spreads I set up today, probably at all, but definitely not as easily and efficiently. I also had no idea what a key was or how to migrate a task. I've learned a lot in the past six years. And I'm sure if you keep bullet journaling for the next six years, you will have learned a lot too. So remember to be kind to yourself and to others and that we're all on our own path, on our own timeline, and we'll all get where we need to get eventually, regardless of what anyone else is doing. No two bullet journals look the same, and that is the best thing about them. I'm so excited for you to be starting your first ever bullet journal. I sincerely hope that your bullet journal turns out to be as helpful for you, as life-changing for you as mine has been for me. Let me know in the comments down below when you'll be starting your first bullet journal because I would love to congratulate you. Also, let me know if you have any questions because I'm happy to help. Again, I've linked a bunch of things you can check out down in the description box to get even more direction. I've also linked the bullet journal website so you can get all of the absolute basics of the system down. I could have reiterated them here in this video, but honestly, no one explains them as well as their creator, Ryder Carroll, so I'll let him do the honors. Don't forget to like this video if you found it helpful and hit subscribe and the notification bell if you wanna be notified every time I post a new bullet journal video. I'll actually be posting my newest bullet journal setup video next week, so make sure you don't miss it. And with that, I'll see you very soon in my next one. Bye friends. 
I want to take a moment to thank my patrons for their support. Extra special thanks to our newest patrons, Kara, Shaylin, Sophia, Risha, Annette, Amanda, Zoe, Caitlin, Sharifa, Ming King, Brittany, and Sophie Kristen. Welcome all of you to the squad. We are so excited to have you. If you at home want to join the squad, feel free. There's a link in the card and in the description box down below. And if you're looking for something else to watch, I recommend you check out this video or this video.